Hello, my name is Kainton, and today we are going to be talking about Bloom filters. If you are taking a course in data structures and algorithm, then most likely you will encounter Bloom filters. And my objective is to make this explanation as simple as possible. So let's see how it goes. Um, I'll try to break it into chunks of maybe 10 minutes for each, each section. I'll also try to make sure you understand the calculations or the formulas, uh, the probability calculation, number of bits and things like that. So try to pay attention as we go along. I'll also like to remind you to subscribe because if you subscribe you get notification when i make another video and that will be better so click on the subscribe button to subscribe now what are we going to cover we are going to discuss what is bloom filter very uh, briefly how bloom filters work then we take a typical example i would like you to pay attention to this third part this example because it's always very clear uh, when you take an example then I've also decided to separate the mathematics part of it, the, I mean the calculation, or the, the formula and the, all these uh, mathematical expressions. I'm, I'm going to try to make it really easy. And then how big, how many hash functions, measuring performance, and then application. So let's start from the basics. I'm not going to bore you with all this explanation, but you can read it up yourself. Bloom filters is uh, proposed by Button Howard Bloom in 1970. So it's a data structure used to test whether an element is a member of a set. False positives are allowed, but false negatives is not possible. So in Bloom filters, false negatives is not possible, but false positive may be allowed, but the probability of false positive uh, has to be very, very small. Another thing about Bloom filters, it is space efficient and probabilistic. So these are the uh, four points I just want to outline to make you understand how the basics. So basically, Bloom filter is a data structure, but not a hash table. But it has to do with hash table, as we are going to see in the next slide. All right, so let's see. How does a Bloom filter work? First, a Bloom filter is an empty bit array. It starts with an empty bit array all set to zero. So this is the starting point of a Bloom filter as an empty bit array. Let's see, let me see if I can draw, okay. So this is the initial part of the Bloom filter, an empty bit array all set to zero. So initially, in a Bloom filter, this is what we have. I want to explain it in such a way that you could explain it in your own words. So this is Bloom filter. In initially, initially, this is how it is. And then this goes from, from how many bits? M bits. So this are from Let's say if we start from 0, 1, all the way to what? What is here? M minus 1. So it means that the total number of bits is M minus 1. Now a Bloom filter represents S elements. So we have S is equal to, is always made up of X1, X2, all the way to Xn, right? So to represent uh, this S, we need, we likely need M times N. But don't worry about this. I'll make it clear in the math side of, in the, uh, when I will explain the expressions used. So for a Bloom filter to work, you need hash functions. Hash function H1, H2. You need series of hash function H1 to K. Don't worry about this K, but take note that we have series of hash functions all right so each of the k hash functions maps some elements to one of the array position so this h1 if you pass s1 let's take s1 for uh, this x1 for example h1 of x1 right and it gives us let's say uh, 
gives us 2. So it means that we go to position 2 in the, in the Bloom filter and set it to 1. Remember, a Bloom filter is a bit array, meaning that it's only 1 and 0. So we go to position 2, that is here, and then set it to 1. So let me erase this, and then set it to 1. After passing H1 through H1, we also pass it through H2, the same uh, element, we pass it through H2, and let's say it gives us 5. So what do we do? We go to position 5, this is position 5, and set it to 1, right? So this is basically how it works. Uh, but we still continue. I just want to make sure you understand the principle. All right, so just a recap. We have M bits here. We have K hash functions. And we have a set of elements X1 to Sn. And this we say is the number of bits is given by M times N. So to get this uh, a little clearer, let's now take a typical example uh, a, 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 a very much typical example. I want you to follow along as we do this together, right? So we have this time, what is the value of k? k is equal to, without being told, of course, you know that h1, this is h2, and this is h3. So uh, let's say we, we have a set of s, is equal to um, x1 and x2. Or let me use something that uh, will be easier to follow. Let's, let's not use all these expressions here. So let's take for instance, we have, we have s is made up of a, b. Okay. <clears throat> So, what we now do is that we start uh, mapping this set into the Bloom filter. So, what we do is to say, um, the first thing we do is we use H1 of what? Of A, and it gives us, let's say, 1. Right, H1 of A is gives us 1, so remove 0 and put 1. We also calculate H2 of A, it gives us, let's say, uh, 0, or let's say H2 of A gives us, uh, gives us 8. So, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, remove it and then put 1 here. So, we do the same for H2, for, for this other uh, element. H1 of, of B gives us what? Let's say it gives us 5. Oh, I think I, I, I got it wrong. <coughs> so, let, let me correct it because this is a uh, hate two so it means that what we have is we are working on the second hash function so h2 of a is 8 so that should be 0 1 uh, h let's start afresh h1 of a gives us 1 so we go to position 1 and place uh, 1 so I think we are using zero base index, so we need to we need to start from position zero. So this is position zero one blah 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 blah. Position zero one zero one. So we've calculated H1 of A, H2 of A, the next thing is H3 of A. So you actually pass the 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 element through all the three hash functions, right? So H1 of A 
gives us 1. So we go to position 1, this is 0, 1, and set it to 1. Set it to 1. 8, 2 of A gives us 8. So we go to position 8 and set it to 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, now this is H2, take note. So go to position uh, 8 on H2 and set to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So take out the 0 and set it to 1, right? H3 of A gives us 5, right? So we go to H3 and position 5 and set it to 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and set it to 1. So at this point, we've completed for the first element. So we take for the next one, H1 of B, H2 of B, and H3 of B. So in this case, let's say is equal to 5, 3, uh, 6. Okay. So H1 of B, so this time we are talking about B. Uh, H1 of B gives us 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and set it to 1. H2 of B gives us 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and set it to 1. And H3 of B, a small letter, gives us 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so this is how basically a bloom filter works so you can say this is insertion we just talked about insertion now right so if a new element comes let's say s equal to a c so what to do is now to, to search to see if this element is in the filter to check if this element is in the filter, you calculate this, this, the, you exactly do the same thing you did in the previous one. You calculate uh, H, H1 of A, H2 of A, H3 of A, and it gives us values. But if you are calculating H uh, oh, for the value of the, for element C and you are calculating H, most likely you are going to encounter zero. And when you encounter zero, how you conclude that this element is not in the filter. So this is a basic example of how it works. In the next uh, slide, then we'll continue to now calculate the probability that an element is in the filter or is not in the filter. So I'd like to stop here. Take some time to get your head around this and make sure you understand these basic principles. And remember to subscribe uh, and then let's continue from the next tutorial.